Today's show is sponsored by Datadog. With infrastructure monitoring, distributed tracing, and logs, Datadog provides end-to-end visibility into the health and performance of modern applications. Datadog's distributed tracing and APM generates detailed flame graphs for real requests, enabling you to visualize how requests propagate through your distributed infrastructure. See which services or calls are generating errors or contributing to overall latency, and dive deeper into your production code with an always-on code profiler to pinpoint the root cause. Start monitoring your applications with a free trial, and Datadog will send you a free t-shirt. Visit datadog.com slash APM dash cloudcast. That's datadog.com slash APM dash cloudcast. Cloudcast Media presents from the massive studios in Raleigh, North Carolina. This is the Cloudcast with Aaron Delb and Brian Gracely, bringing you the best of cloud computing from around the world. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to the Cloudcast. We are coming to you live from the massive Cloudcast studios here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Last show of the year, uh, we are going to take a break after doing this show, but uh, hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody is uh, enjoying the holiday season. Hopefully, uh, for those of you that get a chance to get a little bit of a break uh, from from work and you get a chance to spend some time with your family and all, hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody is staying safe and healthy. Um, unfortunately, the, uh, the COVID thing keeps going on as we crank into year two and we're getting very close to it. Unfortunately, getting into the third year. So hope everybody is staying safe, take care of each other, um, you know, take care of your health. And we're going to kind of wrap up this last year with something I've never really done before. Uh, but, uh, you know, I feel like as we go into 2022, um, as we, you know, I, I'm, I'm doing a sort of the last Sunday Perspective show of the year. Uh, really enjoyed the Sunday Perspective show. I've gotten a lot of really nice feedback from people. Um, you know, they, they get some value out of it. So we've enjoyed doing a second show for you every week. Um you know, and it's, it's, I'm sort of thinking, I, I, end of the year, I always sort of make some lists uh, for those of you that listen week in and week out. You know, last week we did, Aaron and I did our sort of year-end wrap-up show. And, you know, as I was thinking about that, uh, one of the things that I do around this time of the year, uh, and I kind of collect them in the last quarter of the year oftentimes, is sort of my list of things that I want to go read, right? So I'm, I'm going to get a few days uh, downtime here. Um, and just kind of, you know, go and, and read a lot of things, um, you know, give me some new perspective for the year, uh, give me some new perspective on, you know, where the world's going, what trends are happening and so forth. And I thought this year would be a little different um, because I, I have this really big list of things. And I think the reason why I have this really big list of things is it feels like as we're going into 2022, you know, um, it feels like we're going through sort of a big transition. And so I, I, I sort of collected this big list of both uh, things that I think are interesting reads about trends happening around cloud computing, which obviously is the the sort of cornerstone uh, foundation of this show, Um, but also, you know, a whole bunch of articles and perspectives, both positive and negative and some technical and some economic and so forth about sort of this web two versus web three debate. And and Aaron and I have sort of briefly touched on it here a little bit in the last few shows, uh, last month or two, um, something, you know, we're both kind of trying to figure out. I think there's a lot of people uh, in the technology domain, they're trying to figure this out uh, beyond just the sort of hype of crypto computing, uh, you know, uh, cryptocurrencies, and so forth. Um, and so, I've put together a list of both um, those cloud computing articles that I think are, are kind of interesting, um, kind of bigger perspective, uh, and then you know some things about sort of Web two versus Web three, or you know, kind of the transitional types of things. And I'm going to kind of dig into some of those uh, right after the break. But I, I do, you know, we'll make the list available to you. Um, we'd love to hear sort of your list of things that you're interested in diving into. But I'm going to kind of dive into those right after the break. Today's show is sponsored by Jump Cloud, introducing the Jump Cloud Directory platform, the directory reimagined for the modern world. Jump Cloud changes the way IT administrators manage their organizations by providing a comprehensive and flexible cloud directory platform. From one pane of glass, manage user identities and resource access, secure Mac, Windows, and Linux devices, and get a full view of your environment. Try JumpCloud for free today at jumpcloud.com and help your organization move to a modern, secure, hybrid work model. And we're back. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, um, you know, it's, it's sort of that time of year when when I try and spend some time reading a little more than I may normally have a chance to uh, during day to day job, and and when my kids are off, you know, trying to get the kids to school every week and, and helping them with all those things and travel and all the other stuff. Um, and so I made this sort of big list that I've been kind of compiling for the last couple of months, and I think a couple of things 
really kind of, uh, you know, kind of look, you know, kind of stood out to me. Um, and, and the reason I make this list every year is, you know, for my own rationale, um, I played a lot of sports growing up and, you know, I'm not going to get into any of the sports piece of it here. I know some people care, some people don't, it doesn't matter. Uh, but the interesting thing about playing sports um, was from any year to year or even in a season to season, right, a part of the year, there was always sort of a beginning and an end. And, and if you, you know, if you play sports, um, yes, you know, if you continue to play year to year, just like any hobby or any other activity, you know, you're, you're trying to find a way to get better, but sports always were felt fairly unique to me in that, you know, there was a beginning to a season, there was an end, there was a, a kind of a record of, of how well you had done, you know, whether it was a team sport or an individual sport. And, but then at the end, you know, especially like, let's say you'd had a poor year or you, you know, just hadn't done well or whatever you could kind of put that behind you. You could kind of forget about it and put it behind you. And in the world that we work in with technology, there is no, <clears throat> there's no really sort of end of the year, right? It, you know, there are calendar ends of years and companies report fiscal earnings and all these sort of things, but the year doesn't really end, right? It's, it's you know, there's always sort of an ongoing set of new technologies, an ongoing set of competitive uh, dynamics between companies. There's always, you know, businesses trying to figure out better ways to reach their customers, work with data, interact with their marketplaces, all those sort of things. And they never really end. And so, you know, for me, I've always had this thing I've had to sort of mentally work through, which is, you know, how do I go from something that I used to do a lot, which was kind of have these definitive beginnings and ends, and then you could kind of make decisions about what do you do going into the next season or next year, uh, versus, you know, kind of the world we live in, which is this kind of continuous place that is always evolving. And so, you know, part of the reason I make this sort of big list is it gives me a chance to sort of stop and think and, and kind of put a, a mental end to any given year. And it sort of allows me to sort of, you know, reset and, and figure out what the next year is going to look like, even though, you know, it, it's a continuum at that point. And so, you know, what what's interesting, I think this year and different than maybe in the past is, I feel like, uh, you know, and Aaron and I have talked about this, we talked about it on a recap show for 2021, um, you know, it feels like maybe we're getting into sort of the the second generation of what cloud computing is, right? We first sort of got started with it, uh, you know, a dozen or so years ago when we first started the show, it was, uh, you know, this little thing uh, that was Amazon and, you know, there was this sort of idea of like, we're going to give up some control of what we do day to day from an IT perspective and, you uh, that's sort of cloud. And then cloud evolved, obviously, you had all the different ways to develop applications differently, you know, cloud native applications, you had kind of, you know, existing technology, could you lift and shift that into the cloud, um, SaaS started to become a thing, SaaS started to explode. So I mean, we've had all these things going on for the last, you know, decade plus. But it really feels like, um, you know, we're now at a stage where, uh, you know, people kind of understand how the cloud works. They understand their decision-making process. Um, whether they're really good at it or not, there are lots of experienced people uh, who you know, build applications in new ways. Uh, AI and, and, and ML are part of what we do all the time. Um, you know, so all these things have sort of become kind of mainstream, and we're really starting to see these sort of different trends start to emerge uh, around the cloud. And so you know, if you if you look at the list of things that I have in here, they're really about, you know, not will the cloud survive, which which big cloud provider will be first, second, or third, uh, but it really kind of gets into you know some things like what does it look like to start to build technology that might uh, span multiple clouds, and we're beginning to see more and more companies do that. What does it look like to uh, build a company that's uh, based on SaaS technologies? Like, what does it mean from a technology perspective? What does it mean from a business model perspective? Um, really kind of diving into something like that. Um, I included a number of articles from some of the big VC firms because one of the things that Benair and I have always found to be useful in our kind of quest to figure out these technologies is is to not only dive into the technologies, which is um, you know can be very interesting and and fun, um, but something doesn't give you complete perspective because there's always new stuff. But it was you know will these technologies be around for the long term? Are they well funded? Uh, do they solve problems that you can associate sort of ROI and money with and so forth? So. A lot of times we will start with kind of the trends that the VCs are looking at, where they're putting their money, because that kind of gives you a sense of over the next two, three, five, six, seven years, where are they going? Where do they see trends? And you can kind of, you know, map those out year to year. Uh, some of them are more transparent than others. So I included a number of those articles in here. Um, and then I included a few things uh, from purely technology perspective. So, um, you know, there's a few technologies I'm kind of interested in uh, that, you know, have a lot of hype, but I don't quite understand them. So some things around WebAssembly, 
kind of a new way of, of looking at building applications, uh, abstracting infrastructure, uh, EP, eBPF and service mesh. Uh, we've had a couple of discussions about those on the show over the last year or so. Um, and so I'm you know, kind of interested in that technology, especially as it kind of blurs the line between uh, what application developers care about, what, uh, what involves security, uh, what does it look like from an infrastructure perspective, all those kind of blur together with those things. So a lot going on there. And then there's a couple of things I have about kind of what's it, what does it look like from both a product management perspective as well as kind of marketing communications of these new types of services. And so there, you'll see some interesting articles um, in there about that as well. So, you know, kind of the first half of my my big giant reading list um, involves all the cloud stuff. And uh, we'll, you know, there'll be a link in the show notes. Um, I'll, everybody will have access to it. Um, but uh, yeah, that kind of gives us a sense of, you know, how are we thinking about what, you know, for us, how to think about bringing content to you, but more importantly, for us individually, you know, how are we trying to learn, uh, be smarter, uh, be more informed, have different perspectives, um, you know, both sides of the, the coin, if you will, both sides of the aisle, both sides of perspectives. Um, so you'll see there's a there's a mix of kind of, you know, take a technology, take a trend and sort of the pro side and the con side of it. You'll see both of those in there. And I think we've, I've always found that reading both sides of those helps me be more informed, understand why people are you know, positive towards things, why they're negative towards things, what, you know, how do they, how do they kind of justify what they're doing? Um, you know, so th- that's sort of in that list. And then the second list, I think you're going to find a little more, um, I don't want to say controversial, but a little more um, maybe harsh, if you will. And that's the one that really sort of looks at this web three versus web two uh, type of, of perspective. And the reason I said it, it's going to come across a little bit harsh is, you know, we're, we're at the very beginning of this sort of potentially new paradigm, but what will probably end up happening is, as we've seen with with many, many paradigms in technology, they tend to run in parallel for a long period of time um, and, and oftentimes maybe run that way for forever. Um, you know, so, you know, we, we still talk about the mainframe era, the mini computer era. We don't talk about that one as much. We talk about, we talk about um, you know, client server. Uh, there's still plenty of client server applications out there. We talk about web applications. We talk about mobile and, and while early days, there's lots of hype and, and buzz about, well, will one replace the other? What we tend to find is that they tend to live for a long, long time. And, and there will be segments of, of the industry or segments of the economy, segments of population that will drift towards one and then kind of you know, no longer use the other. But they rarely go away. And so what's really interesting in these sort of Web 3 versus Web 2 discussions is, number one, um, you know, a lot of Web 2 people sort of asking – what is this stuff? What does it mean? What, what's the technology behind it? Like, how is it different than what I know today? And and when? Why are you building these things? Like, what's the motivation for for making these radical changes versus you know just incrementally making the current system better? All right. So there's there's a number of articles in there about that. There's a number of articles in there that are you know like I mentioned talking about WebAssembly and eBPF and Service Mesh. There's some technology, pure technology articles in there. Like, what is this stuff? How does it work? How would somebody get started with it? Um, so there's some things in there about Ethereum, about smart contracts, about um, you know how to build some some early applications. So I tried to you know have some basic things in there as well, things that I'm interested in. I think you'd be interested in them well as well. And then there's some you know there's some very distinct opinion pieces in here, and uh, you know everything from you know articles that say like uh, Web three is fraud and Web three is bullshit and it's too early to get excited about Web three. To others that are, um, you know, very, very sort of positive about it. Where is it going? What's what's possible? Um, you know, a uh, one article is, you know, engineers hype free observations on Web three, and you know, this is, you know, from some people who have been, you know, building things in this space and and kind of give their their good honest feedback. So, uh, I think you'll find in the Web three versus Web two, um, you know, the the perspectives are going to be a little more diverse. Um, you know, some are very very negative, um, some are very very positive. Um, you know, and I try to pull these from people that are less motivated purely by the hype of it. Um, so you won't necessarily see, you know, a lot of VCs and you're having to sort of go, okay, are they really just saying this to hype up what they're doing and, you know, kind of follow the money? You know, they tend to be very, very technical engineering people uh, kind of making these perspectives. And so I try to include a lot of those. Um, I'm hoping that uh, you'll find interest in those. And I think what Aaron and I are going to try and do in, in 2022 is 
We're going to kind of pull some nuggets out of this as we begin to learn some of these spaces a little bit better. We're going to pull some nuggets. We're going to find some interesting people. We've already been in contact with a lot of interesting people, um, and we're going to we're going to put a few of these in the in the show. Um, you know, we don't expect this show to turn into a you know a crypto show or a Web three show or whatever. Uh, but we've always evolved from from where kind of the, the the sort of next couple of years are looking like somewhat mainstream, somewhat you know bleeding edge of what's going on. You know, and I think as we find uh, areas where we either have an opportunity to, you know, use our style of communication and teaching uh, to help y'all. We're going to do that. Um, when we find an area that's really interesting to us, uh, we'll do that. We definitely won't turn this into sort of a crypto investment podcast or, you know, our NFTs good or bad, those sort of things. You know, there are dozens and dozens of podcasts. You can go dig into those. But I think as we, you know, as we see it sort of applied to the world that we live in, which is, you know, how does business use technology? How do developers, you know, build new ideas? How do we, you know, how, how are people kind of improving things for our operations and app dev and all those sort of areas? Um, you know, we're going to sprinkle it in and when it makes sense. Um, and again, we will, um, as we've done in the past, um, when we have no idea what we're talking about, we're going to go find really smart people. And when we do begin to sort of have a better clue of some of these things, we'll, you know, we'll bring a little bit of that insight um, in, in how we went about learning it to you as well. So uh, as always, your feedback is, is always super important. You know, what do you want to hear about? Um, you know, when is too much too much and when is not enough enough? Let us know about those things as well. So I think if I go through this whole list, there are probably about, about, about a dozen Future of Cloud Computing articles. There's about a dozen Web3 versus Web2 articles. And then a few sort of interesting uh, Twitter threads from some people that have been on the show and, and sort of friends of the show that we thought were kind of interesting perspectives of how they're learning and maybe where they're applying certain things. So uh, anyway, so I'm going to kind of wrap up. Uh, I didn't want this show to be too long, but I did want to give you some, you know, just some things to dig into. The show has always been about um, how to educate people, how to, you know, how to learn uh, new things, how to figure out where to spend your very valuable time. And, uh, you know, because I pull this list together, I often find if, if I do some stuff and, and it could be useful to other people, it's, it's good to put it out on the podcast. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. I want to thank everybody as we did last week. Uh, and as we always do, thank you for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. Um, thanks for all the sponsors that, that help make this show possible. And if you get a chance, um, you know, we always put the links to the sponsors in the show notes as well. Go out and visit them. If, if what they do um, can help your business, can help you with your job, can help you make your life easier, um, go support those sponsors. They've been really good to us. They help us put the show on every week. And um, we want to thank them as, as we always do. Uh, but, you know, as always, thank, thank you all for listening. Thanks for telling a friend. Um, you know, thanks for just helping make us, you know, giving us feedback on, on what works. And we've really enjoyed the feedback uh, this year, maybe more so than we've ever seen before. And, and that's great. Um, so thanks again. Uh, thanks for telling a friend. And we look forward to talking to you in 2022. Thank you for listening to The Cloudcast. Please visit thecloudcast.net to find more shows, show notes, videos, and everything social media.